As a mini PC enthusiast, I love testing cute devices like these, but such compact PCs aren't always delivering the best performance. The mini PC I'm taking a look at today should be capable of offering a bit more though, because this machine comes equipped with an 8-core CPU. However, don't get your hopes up too early on, because 8 cores do not always equal 8 cores in terms of performance. To be exact, today we are dealing with the exotic Morphine M9S. This device features the Intel Core i3 and 305 8-core processor, 32GB of DDR5 RAM and a lightning-fast 1TB M.2 NVMe SSD. As for graphics, integrated ones by Intel, which basically means we'll not exactly be looking at a great performer gaming-wise. On the plus side, this makes the price a lot more affordable and attractive. While the availability is a bit scarce right now, especially over here in Europe, the price of today's exact model and specs is at roughly 330 to 365 US dollars currently. In today's video, I will briefly show and explain what is and isn't possible with the Morphine M9S and what the power consumption, temperatures and noise levels are like. I'll say it right away, the M9S does really well in a few certain aspects. The scope of delivery is pretty standard for a device of this price tier. Firstly, the mini PC itself, a 36 watt USB-C power supply along with its EU plug adapter, an HDMI cable, a VESA mounting bracket as well as screws, and finally a quick guide. First of all, I'd like to praise the M9S's striking appearance. It looks simple and elegant without being over the top. The overall build quality seems to be at a fairly acceptable level. There's nothing to complain in that regard, although the entire case is made out of plastic. I personally find the reflective top cover a really nice addition, but in practice it is not only a fingerprint, but also a dust magnet. With dimensions of 125 by 114 by 42 mm, this is not the smallest mini PC on the market, but it's still pretty compact and at least has a good range of ports, which we'll get to shortly. As already mentioned, at the heart is the i3 N305 CPU with 8 cores and 8 threads based on Alder Lake N which was released in Q1 2023. Even though only a single 32GB RAM module is installed, thanks to DDR5 technology it's still running in dual channel at 4800 megatransfers per second. Unlike most mini PCs, Morphine decided to go for an NVMe SSD by a renowned brand. That's why there's a crucial P3 M.2 SSD in here with an interface of PCIe 3.0 X4. I believe a capacity of 1TB is quite decent for the price range. As expected, the NVMe SSD delivers really good read and write speeds. And more finds marketing regarding the memory turns out to be true as the RAM is actually running at its stated speed. Me personally, I'm always pleased when one can easily get to the internals easily on such devices to carry out upgrades. In this case, simply loosen four screws on the bottom of the device and pull off the cover. Screwing in a supplied VESA screw can act as a useful life hack for that, by the way. This gives us full access to the SSD and the RAM, but also the CMOS battery. There's neither an additional RAM nor an M.2 slot for expansion. I would have liked seeing the option of installing another SSD in here, but I'm not going to complain about that since the manufacturer quickly makes things right by offering good I.O. So in the front next to the power button, we get two USB 3.2 Gen 1 ports, then a USB Type-C port, which most likely is only 3.2 Gen 1 though, and 3.5mm audio. On the opposite side, however, there's a USB-C power input, one DisplayPort 1.4, and HDMI 2.0, two USB 2.0, and two 2.5 gigabit LAN ports. Behind those, however, is no crappy Realtek, but rather Intel i226 VTEC. That's very nice. Apparently, there was no room left for an SD card reader, though. The left and right sides of the M9S only provide ventilation cutouts. This mini PC also offers Wi-Fi 6E and Bluetooth 5.3, and again, Intel-based. In terms of I.O. and its quality, some other brands could certainly start taking notes. 
Windows 11 Pro version 23H2 is pre-installed out of the box. Strangely, after booting up the first time, Windows doesn't seem to be activated, but that could very well be due to the fact we've apparently time-traveled to the year 2112. After adjusting the date and time back to the present day, and after restarting the PC, Windows is activated. After a quick check, it turns out it's even a genuine OEM license. There appears to be no bloatware or basically any third-party software on the device, and no suspicious services or processes seem to be running in the background either. As is often the case, the so-called Google Docs offline extension is pre-installed in the Microsoft Edge web browser by default. I don't like seeing it in there, but I've been told by several sources now that it is safe and clean. But since I'm generally a skeptical person, I still like to run a number of virus scans for the sake of completeness. I can happily confirm that neither Windows Defender slash security, Malwarebytes, nor Norton 360 were able to detect any malware, not even when performing an external SSD scan. The Windows installation seems to be clean and trustworthy. The UEFI BIOS does not immediately put me off this time, because while we are not getting all sorts of crazy customization options in here, we can still make some slight adjustments here and there, even tinker with the fan curve. Now let's talk business. If we put the i3 N305 CPU at full load, we can initially read out a clock speed of just under 3 GHz on all 8 cores. Even after 2 minutes of full load, the clock speed remains unchanged, which I consider to be very good, as this is an indication that the temperatures are under control. In the performance test with Cinebench 2024, an i3 N305 finally ranks noticeably above the low-end classics, such as N97 and N100 models. We are still talking about anything but phenomenal performance, but at least there's a lot you can do with it now, especially when considering the price point of this device. The single core performance, on the other hand, is suspiciously similar to related older like N CPU models. Nonetheless, with an N305 and its 8 impressive cores, you can actually do some light image and video editing, maybe even rendering, if you're not pushing it too far. 4K UHD videos and movies, of course, play back smoothly without any dropped frames or lag. But then again, even much cheaper devices are capable of doing that. However, today's M9S simply cannot handle anything that involves great graphics load due to the low-end Intel UHD graphics. This means that AAA gaming, even games that came out years ago, are only playable to an extent and with major compromises. At full HD 1080p, you can expect 20 to 30 FPS in older titles at best, while with the screen resolution drop down to 720p would allow for 30 to 60 FPS in respective game titles. However, if you decide to fire up less demanding games, whether old or new ones, the Intel UHD graphics do cope relatively well and provide a smooth frame rate. Now let's talk power consumption, temperatures and noise levels. When idling, the M9S only consumes 15 watts and doesn't even draw 20 watts when performing light tasks such as YouTube. Still, if you really put some serious load onto the CPU, we are close to hitting the 50 watt mark, which is still very little compared to a rather power efficient desktop PC regardless. So one thing's for sure, this thing's power efficient, yet with a power draw of almost 50 watts, I have slight concerns regarding the included power supply, which is supposedly only rated for 36 watts. To be on the safe side, they could have included a beefier power supply, but then again, I didn't encounter any issues during testing. The temperatures are kept in check extraordinarily well. At light loads, we are hovering in the 50s, while at maximum load, noticeably below 80 degrees Celsius. The M9S is also clearly audible with a measured 44 decibels, but nothing too bad or annoying. You can also hear the fan at idle, but it tends to run at a lower fan speed then, so that's only 40 decibels. Conclusion The more fine M9S is anything but perfect, but it does a lot of things right, and compared to some other brands, uses higher quality components. First and foremost, the good fast NVMe SSD by the renowned brand Crucial, then there's two 2.5 gigabit LAN ports based on Intel, Wi-Fi 6E and Bluetooth 5.3, then there's the USB Type-C port and the generally good variety of I.O., 
the power consumption, temperatures and noise levels are ok too, and so is the offered performance within the price range mentioned. Secretly, I would have hoped for a beefier power supply for perfection, another M.2 slot for further SSD expansion, and an SD card reader wouldn't have been too bad either. Apart from that, the advantages clearly outweigh the disadvantages in my opinion. That's why the more fine M9S deserves a recommendation from me. As long as it is available and in stock though, which I strongly assume will be the case in the future. Did the M9S I reviewed today spark any of your personal interest or are you left unimpressed by it? What are the no-gos and strengths of this particular mini PC in your opinion? If you enjoyed the video, I'd appreciate it if you gave it a like, but of course a dislike is fine too. With that being said, thank you so much for watching and until the next one.